there is one person in the world that I am sincerely and wholly jealous of. I would like to say it wasn't true, but Becca has my dream greenhouse, right? It is <laughs> geothermal, it's passive solar, it's everything I could ever hope to have. And today we're gonna talk about how Becca feeds her family using the food that grows in this greenhouse. Hey, Provident Preppers, today we have a really special video. This is my friend Becca, and she is from the Manti Homestead. And she has this amazing underground greenhouse where she's able to grow a tremendous amount of food to feed her family. For the, all of us that garden, sometimes it's a little bit overwhelming and you grow food and sometimes you're wasting some and you don't get around to all of it. But Becca has done a really good job of being able to figure some of this out. So today, she's gonna share all of her secrets with us. So tell us a little bit about how you've been able to schedule this and make it work. Yeah, as far as scheduling it, it is a different way of thinking than an outdoor garden and a seasonal garden where you have all your produce for the year hit you all at once. So this one I like to pace myself because I do get something out of here every single day of the year. So what I've come up with is to just plant what I want to harvest in three months and I only want to harvest enough to eat for that week and then for the next week so I plant every week. Maybe a little extra in case the bugs sabotage it. But this is the schedule I came up with is on Mondays, every Monday I come out and I think of a vegetable tray. As much awesomeness I can put in a vegetable tray I, I gather. And in the winter time it's carrots and broccoli are the main thing and they taste so delicious in the winter time, they just do. And cauliflower tastes really good in the winter too. But broccoli is the ever giving one. Cauliflower, you only get one cut. So I plant a little extra of that. And you've talked and about broccoli. So you yeah, use some broccoli <laughs> leaves in some of the food that she has made for us. And it's amazing, it's so sweet yeah. and tender. And I was really impressed. I hadn't thought to actually harvest the leaves <laughs> and use them. So like on Tuesday, Tuesday is my day to gather salads and I will, I will take some of the broccoli on that day too to add into my salad. And the salad is best in the winter time as well. It sim seems to bolt in the summer, right? Yeah. But I do get the beet tops and I've got kale and, and that kind of thing. But that's kind of my break day because that's easy to just go clip some leaves. But it's a lot more work on Wednesday again when it is my fresh salsa day is what I'm thinking of. So I come and I take care of all my pepper plants on that day and I get peppers and we make pepper poppers. Which, which I tried awesome. today and they are so good. Yeah. Like, because the peppers taste different. Like you cannot buy peppers that taste like what you can grow. Yeah, yeah, and peppers are so great. They are year round. We were doing fresh salsa and pepper poppers all through the winter. So then I'll take care of the tomatoes on that day too and the onions. So then on Thursday, I come out and I think of what I would put into a stir fry. So I get cabbage and I get kale and again broccoli leaves and stems and broccoli too itself. And I had that stir fry today and it was yeah. really good. And then Friday is kind of my soup day or pizza toppings day, just kind of whatever I, whatever needs to be harvested or we'll just come and get whatever happens to be in the season. Like we have the artichokes or the, the green beans, they constantly need picking and we love those. And then I replant again on Saturday and then Sunday's day off. So that's that kind of my so week. Awesome. <laughs> and you are growing some really fun, different things. You want to tell us a little bit about those? There's <laughs> lemons in here and there's limes. You've got an avocado mm -hmm. tree and a yeah. banana tree and some really cool, what are the fruits that were turning purple that we were oh, looking yes, at? Oh yes, the passion fruit. The passion And they fruits. do taste really good. So that's, that's really cool. Now, one of the things that I was really impressed with is that you have a cow. And, yeah. and it's kind of <laughs> like your baby, right? You just had another little <laughs> calf. Yes. And she you milk now. <laughs> every morning. Yes, I do. And so, I love it. It's very fun. <laughs> I am super impressed. So she's making her own cheese and she's milking a cow. And you have a really fun <laughs> video about milking your cow. So we'll leave a link in the corner of the video so that you can go check her out. But that's <laughs> like, she's my hero. She lives the life that I really want to live. And you guys do the chickens and you have rabbits. We actually had rabbit with our stir fry today, which was really delicious. Yeah. I have a problem getting it from the cute fuzzy creature to the pan. 
Yeah, I and have a little hold up there. It's humbling. But it's humbling. It really is. Yeah, but it was it was absolutely delicious. And we mm -hmm. when we're talking about being more um, self reliant, and if we can't go to the store, if we can't buy our own food, and we need to produce it, how much of it can you produce? And I think the chickens are really important because it's a great source of fat and of protein. But the rabbits, that's that's a really good thing because you can actually get more meat by raising rabbits than you can by raising a cow in a year period of time. I thought that was really interesting for less feed. So as a survival thing, it's really good. So if you had some tidbit of advice for somebody who is looking at doing this, what would you tell them? Maybe just don't overwhelm yourself by planting too much of one thing. Give a variety and do it in every spot you can because something's probably gonna fail if you put it in the back corner as opposed to by the window, but maybe not. Maybe it's the other way around. So you just kind of have to experiment and just have fun with it. <laughs> so thank you, thank you, thank you, Becca. I've learned so much and it was a wonderful, wonderful afternoon that we've had here. So I encourage you, go visit the Manti Homestead and learn some of the wonderful things that they're doing and especially check out the greenhouse. And now for the question of the day. If I were blessed to have this greenhouse <laughs> at my house, which I would love that man behind the camera who is watching this. <laughs> what do you think I should grow in my greenhouse? Comment below and thanks for being part of the solution.